Welcome to the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers. My name is Jackson Mummy, and each week we'll be bringing you updated information about the bar exam and what you need to do in order to make the next bar exam your last bar exam. Ready to get started? Let's jump to it. Well, hey, everybody. We are here today to talk about the next generation bar exam. And I've got our partner at Celebration Bar Review, Judge Tracy Dawson. Tracy, it's good to have you here. I know you've been the point person for Celebration Bar Review in looking at the next generation bar exam, right? That's right. As it rolls out, I'm rolling in. There we go. This is a massive chain in the bar exam. This is somewhere down the road, correct? It is somewhere down the road, somewhere between two and four years from now. But you're right, Jackson, it is a game changer for the bar review. We're going to talk about what's different, what we know about the next generation exam, and what people who are watching today might want to know going into the future. If you are taking the bar exam, your exam is not changing till at least 2026 and probably later. That is right. And even when the next gen bar exam comes into being, your current bar exam will be offered for at least two more years. So we're actually probably talking about 2028. And if you're in a state like Florida or California, you may not be taking the next generation bar exam at all. The reality is there's a lot we don't know, but we've dived in pretty deep and we are starting to create our course for the next generation exam. Probably a good place to start would be for you to describe in broad terms, what makes the next generation exam different than what we're doing today in the bar exam? Thank you. And some of it will be very familiar. A lot of it will be based on what is now called MBE or ME questions. Those questions will look much different. In some answers, there'll be four selections, and some, there'll be up to six. It's going to be a broad spectrum of what they are testing, and it will require a lot more intuitive selection on the part of the bar taker. Currently, on the MBE, you get four answer choices, and one is correct. Part of the new multiple choice portion of the exam may have some questions in which two answers are required to pass the question. That's correct. And some of the questions they've sent us, only one answer is correct out of six. Okay. So That's a big difference. So definitely selective intuition and some other things are going on there. You were going to talk about some of the other elements. Go ahead. Then the other side of the exam is going to get away from the traditional essays and give you one or two fact patterns. And out of the fact patterns, there will be both practical applications and performance tests like tests that you are required to do. One of the big changes that's been announced for the next generation is that it's a shorter test. Instead of being two full days, it's less. That's and right. So it's going to be much more compact. We're expecting a day and a half of testing, and that certainly can be changed. And I think it's important to say all of this is subject to change. It could definitely change over the next couple of years, probably will. So just to recap, you'll have some multiple choice, some performance tests, maybe some short answers, but nothing that is a pure bar exam essay. That's right. So what are the subjects that we know right now or anticipate will be tested on the next generation exam? Is it the same as what the bar exam tests today? They are going to test in what they call foundational areas. The next gen will test in three areas. The first one being multiple choice, which will be 50% of the exam. Integrated question sets with one fact pattern and then multiple things to do with the fact pattern. That's going to be 30% and longer writing tests, which is like the current performance tests. And that's going to be 25%. The eight foundational concepts and principles that will be tested are business associations, simple procedure contracts, constitutional law, criminal law, evidence, real property, courts, and professional conduct rules. Let me ask about business associations for just a minute. We anticipate that would be corporations, agency, and partnerships at this point. We don't know for sure, but I think that would be a good assumption. And then when we look at subjects like civil procedure and criminal law and evidence, 
we assume that those are multi-state types of subjects. They're federal subjects rather than state specific, because this is one uniform test that will be given every place that agrees to adopt it, correct? That is correct, because we don't have any information yet out of Florida or California or Georgia, which are the ones that write their own now. Okay, so that gives you a sense of the subjects. That looks a lot like what the MBE subjects are today with the addition, of course, of professional conduct and business associations. But we've got some other subjects like family law that are going to be rolled in later in the process, correct? Family law won't roll out until 2028, but that's right. They're going to test in four skill areas. Issue spotting and analysis. We have a different way of approaching it called FLA facts, law, and application. And we will modify our teaching so that we use FLA because that's the best way to take the bar exam. Then we are going to go to practical issues such as client counseling and advising, negotiation and dispute resolution, and client relationships and management. So me, more like what you would be doing in a law practice. That's something very different for a bar exam, isn't it? never happened before. And it's going to require a different approach in terms of teaching the bar because now it becomes practical rather than purely academic. And that's one of the reasons that we brought you into Celebration Bar Review. You have a history as a judge and as a practicing attorney. Our other staff members also have practical experience. So yes, I'm excited to take my 41 plus years of law practice out into the field for this bar review and bar exam, because this is a subject that is lacking. It will require that students not just sit down and absorb the material. It will require that they interact and perform. Right. We're preparing already for that and starting to put together some innovative things. Stay tuned. We've got some big stuff coming there. That's not my strength. I'm an academic. So I'm more interested in this next section called legal research. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Right now in the performance test, you're given a library. Maybe there are fake cases. Maybe there are U.S. Supreme Court cases that people should know, like Miranda. And you're told to use those in your library. As I understand, they're actually going to test your ability to research cases and statutes and apply them. We really don't know how the test is going to be administered. Let it, if you're going to a computer center or if you're sitting in a big room, if you're doing it from home, all of those things are still open questions. And then the last piece was the legal writing and drafting. Can you talk a little bit about that? That one is going to be more like the professional tasks that you're used to based in one fact pattern. So you'd get a fact pattern. And they would want you to spot the issues, do an analysis of what you're seeing there, then talk about how you might approach a client over this or how you might go into a mediation or an arbitration in this case and how you would interact with your client and manage the case. They're going to take you into legal research in the same fact pattern and you're going to work in the library and then write either a motion or a memo or a settlement statement. Wow, that's a lot of change, isn't it? Very different than what we know today in the bar exam. There's a lot we don't know, though, about this upcoming test. I've mentioned some of the things. We don't know how it's going to be administered. We don't know where it's going to be administered. One of the things that people are probably seeing right now is that different bar jurisdictions are announcing they're going to adopt the next generation exam. I think as we're recording today, we're up to about 10 or so jurisdictions that have said they're in. But as I also pointed out, a number of large jurisdictions have not made any commitment at all. And those jurisdictions would include Florida, California, New York, Texas, Georgia. We just don't know. If someone is in law school right now, there is some possibility that they will be given the option to take the next generation exam, or they could opt into a jurisdiction that's not giving the exam. Is that correct? It is possible. Yeah. So what's the advantage of the next generation or the disadvantage of next generation from the existing bar exams? Yeah, that's a loaded question. What Next Gen has in mind is a good idea. It's helping you learn how to practice law. Their idea is, we want to test you on what a beginning lawyer in years one to three should be able to do well in law practice. 
You'll need that. This is a professional competency exam. You also need the substantive law. You're going to be learning that in law school. But for 1L, I would certainly be counseling them to head into internships, head into any classes about mediation and dispute resolution, head into classes where you refine your ability to write motions, opening statements, and memos. Things that are probably not IRAC. And so the writing approach is going to be very important as we go through all of this. If you've not been successful in the current iteration of the bar exam, one of the questions that's probably going to come up is, does it make sense then to switch and try the next generation exam? That's obviously an individualized question. Depending on your skill set, it might be better for you to take the next gen exam. But in other situations, it may be better to stay with the existing bar and work with a company like Celebration Bar Review that specializes in repeat takers for that exam. But you're going to have some choices that you didn't have before. Well, that's true. If you are a repeat taker now, stick with the correct situation because we know it and we know how to help you pass it. Next Gen is kind of out on the fringes. It's out in the atmosphere. And there's so much more that has to be developed with it. We don't really know if it's going to be viable because these big jurisdictions have not bought in. So we could end up with three types of exams. We could end up with next gen for very small UBE jurisdictions. The current exam for other larger UBE jurisdictions. And who knows what California, Georgia, and Florida will decide to do. They have their own exams and their exams are very different. So I would say stick with it for now and let us do the research. Hopefully you'll be licensed and you'll be practicing law. But if you're around in this process in 2026, 2027, 2028, then we can have individual conversations with you and help you decide which way to go. Here's the landscape that we see right now. And it is literally changing every week. We are getting new information. We're attending seminars, working with the NCBE, trying to get a feeling for what this is. And honestly, no one knows. And so if you hear someone telling you that they know exactly what the next gen exam is, that's not accurate. And we know that there are those bar review companies that are going to adapt to this. Some will not survive it at all because they're built solely on the old form of the exam, like the MBE. And then we know that there are some companies starting to develop some things, but I'm not sure that anyone has been really given enough information to develop a full curriculum yet. So I'd be careful about anybody that's claiming that they've already got all those materials. We just don't know what the test is going to actually be doing. We do know is that at Celebration Bar Review, we will continue personal coaching for the next gen bar exam. There is no way to take that exam by just having your nose in a book for a few months. So there will be more opportunities for in-person training, which we call boot camps. There'll be opportunities for virtual training, boot camps. There'll be individual opportunities and maybe even require counseling with one of our coaches and mentoring. I'm not sure you're going to be able to get through this exam unless you really have some practical application with an experienced mentor. So I think we just stay tuned and we are excited to see what happens with this, but we're also cautious. Yeah. And we're devoting a lot of resources to preparing for this exam while we keep our current bar review course viable. That's really what it comes down to. So Tracy, you and I'll be doing these videos to update people as we get new information. The basic bottom line is if you're ready to take the bar exam today, you're taking the existing bar exam. If you're just starting your legal education today and you're thinking about 2026 or later, the next gen is going to be part of your world and we'll develop that and see how it plays out. Subscribe to our podcast webinars and web pages, and you'll be up to date. If you're already in our course, you're in good shape. We've got you covered for the next few years. Thanks Tracy for being here. I'm excited about the next gen exam. I've been doing this for over 30 years. This is the first time the bar has made a significant change and it was a change that was overdue. So. Stay tuned. We'll figure out what happens together and get you ready no matter what the test is.